Hickok 45 doing a little slam firing. If you don't know what that is, I'll explain it to you. Because this is a Model 12 and you can slam fire. Yes, you've been requesting a Model 12 video for quite a while now. And I'm sorry it's taken us so long, but you know, we just can't get to everything right away as much as we'd like to. So anyway, we appreciate it. Now, what do I have? Like I said, a Model 12 and it is really cool. And you know, I had never owned one. Can you believe that? An old guy like me just never had owned a Model 12. But when I was getting into shotguns, defensive shotguns in the 70s and it was in the early 70s i did buy a winchester but it was the uh the model 1200 and you've seen it in a video here that exact firearm i also had a high standard made a what they called a riot shotgun kind of in this configuration I had one of those i liked these i have liked these for a long time this sort of uh, shotgun but the model 12 was there were millions of them around i guess but there were no new ones being made and i wasn't quite well i wasn't uh, nearly as knowledgeable back then about all the various firearms models so i got the 1200 seemed pretty cool anyway the 12 model 12 came before the 1200 and uh, guess what year it came into being more or less you're right 1912 1912 and was manufactured up through, well, 1964, in terms of general, you know, uh, being, being produced in big numbers. I think you could still get one special order all the way up until around 2006 or something. You know, they were still making some of them by special order. But by and large, it was a shotgun that was made until 64. And, and uh, it is pretty cool. We'll talk more about that. Uh, it, it does offer the slam fire feature. <laughs> And it and the Ithaca, there are some others that, that offered that. Uh, not, not a lot of them did. Of course, the Model 97 did. And uh, that's one reason I, well, that's not the reason, but I have it out here because that's kind of the, the daddy, uh, not the granddaddy, I guess, it's the daddy of the Model 12. Mr. John Browning came up with that, of course. And uh, you've seen the video on that, I'm sure. And I would go look at it if you have not. And long that was 97, 1897, of course. But then as it got into the 1900s, uh, the, uh, well, it was Remington, I think an Ithaca, made a pump shotgun that did not have the exposed hammer. And the hammer is okay, but it's a little bit of a nuisance. You know, uh, the one reason I had never owned one of these until recently was the, let's get the, uh, get the off here was the you know the hammer and the bolt coming back into your face and your eyeball and all that I, it was bothered me a little bit but now from a historical standpoint i mean they're extra cool right well ethica and remington had uh, made models that were a little more sleek and they were like this it was all enclosed and winchester went about you know we need to make one of those even though that was a very popular uh, shotgun at 97 but it was beginning to lose sales to those others and so uh, I, I don't know that John Browning actually, uh, I mean, he was alive, but I don't think he was in on like revising that. There was a guy named Johnson, I forget his name, first name, but uh, an engineer for Winchester. And he pretty much came up with this and, uh, and they went to this. So it's kind of a mixture of a John Browning and you know Johnson uh, design here. And it was extremely popular. Based on what I have read, it was considered uh, maybe better than the Remington. I think the Remington was maybe a Model 10. I'm not sure about the Ithaca, but they were fine shotguns. But, but this was really a, a desirable shotgun for the times. It's very solidly built. Uh, this is back when they, they took a, a bar of steel, a block of steel, and milled it out to create that receiver. And that is a you know, time-consuming, expensive process. It's all you know, forged, milled steel, and you know, unlike what is done today in so many cases. So that's why in 1964, Winchester had to, I guess they had to, but they made some major uh, shifts there with several of their firearms. Hence the reason a pre-64 Winchester is so collectible. You know, whether it's one of these, whether it's a Model 70, whether it's a lever gun, you know, pre-64 has created a cult following because it's back when they 
they made them the way they used to make them, you know, mostly out of steel and milled steel, tool steel, a lot of hand fitting and all that kind of thing. Labor costs got really high in the 60s and they had to scramble for other ways to, to build them. So that, that calls for new designs, you know. And a lot of those new designs, you know, get a lot of cursing, you know. If you've been around the firearms world very long, you, you know that phrase pre-64 carries a lot of weight. Okay, uh, you know, with Winchester anyway, and other firearms. You never know when a firearm's gonna change. I always joke about, you know, I may have a couple of Glocks I don't really need to keep, but you know, someday, you know, it, it could be next year. You know, Glock stops, or, or whoever, you know, SIG or m &P, or they, they stop doing something, or they start doing something that's, with all their handguns, that's a little annoying, and nobody really likes it. But in the interest of safety, quote unquote, or government ruling, you know, they have to start doing something different that we don't like. Uh, and then guess what would happen? See, if they did that next year, 2018, then all of a sudden, guess what would be collectible? Pre-18 Glocks, you know, like pre-64 Winchesters, okay? So a little lesson there. Uh, you never know what's gonna happen that's gonna make something collectible, do you? But these are really fine old shotguns. They made, uh, I think, around two million of them. They were uh, they were very instrumental in World War One. A lot of these were made in the trench gun configuration, which is, uh, I guess, about this length, with a heat shield, uh, bayonet lug, and you know the short barrel. Uh, other than that, the same firearm. There were some made, a lot of them made in the riot gun configuration. I read that is uh, kind of this gun right here, basically. It's, uh, you know, without the bayonet lug or the heat shield. I don't really like heat shields myself. I still don't see a, a real serious purpose for them, but maybe maybe there, there is. But, and I'm not sure whether this one was cut down. I, I got this in Tulsa. Uh, I bought this one, this is mine, uh, at the Tulsa Gun Show in whatever it was, the spring, when I was out there. And, uh, and I think the fella told me, and I, I don't know, it's been a long time now. I've been shooting. I forget whether it was actually cut down. I think it was cut down probably uh, if it wasn't a riot model. Uh, it doesn't have the bayonet lug, so it would not have been a trench gun, of course. Those, those command a, a high price. This was just a normal price. Wasn't that expensive. The guy was really good. Gave me a pretty good deal on it. He was, uh, he was a viewer, you know, and, and all that. So I was happy to find it. Uh, like some other firearms I've discussed, I had my radar out for one because we've had so many requests for it. I love pump shotguns and it's a classic. So, you know, I wouldn't mind having one of those, except same old thing. I didn't necessarily want one with a 30 inch barrel or 28 inch barrel where I'm not a hunter, but in terms of a defensive size shotgun, then I can always find a use for that. I've already been using it to trim trees and it would be a good defensive shotgun. I mean, there it is. Good old pump model 12. Heavily built, very well made. This is back when they locked the, the bolt would lock up, you know, in the receiver. Uh, whereas once they started going to the alloy, some companies to the alloy receivers, which are fine. Then you have a barrel extension that comes into here, and the bolt needs to lock up on it. So you've got steel locking up on steel instead of steel locking up on, you know, aluminum alloy. And uh, that's what they did with the 1200, the one that came after this. It replaced the Model 12. It was an alloy frame. I had one of those, like I said, I bought it in the 70s. And uh, it was replaced by the Model 1300. And I've not had that one, I guess. But uh, I just like pump shotguns. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless. And look at all this pretty Federal ammo. Uh, the last batch I ordered, I decided to get some, just for variety, something different. These are clay target loads competition. So I should never miss with these, right? So gold medal, I think these are a little bit higher dollar round. They're basically the same load, I think. I can't tell a lot of difference, uh, but I like those cases. They're kind of interesting. Oh, don't see many of that color. Now this loads, I uh, should have shown you there, the way it loads, the uh, follower there, I thought it was broken when I first started loading the same when I brought it home from Tulsa because the first round or two I put in there it came popping back at me and I was oh, okay well that sort of catches it but they were wanting to come out and they weren't really caught well they catch on the follower that's supposed to be that way there's there's no other gizmo to hold the case in there okay it's kind of, kind of interesting and let's just go we've got six I think in there let's just take a couple more shots so yeah slam firing I've shown you that before 
but we have a lot of new people every day and every week is when you can hold the trigger down you don't really have to keep pulling it. it's not fully auto because it's a pump gun but if you hold the trigger down and and fire like this let's put one in it keeps firing watch now i haven't let off the trigger i'm still squeezing it i'm gonna go for the cowboy there we go. the only problem is you, you tend to want to pull down low left uh so if it was up something close it'd be a lot easier to, to hit something with it and if i practice with it but that's what slam fire means you just hold that trigger and boom, 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 okay? And uh, that was kind of an attractive feature uh, for a, a shotgun that's used in combat, all right? And you never know when you might need that. So, uh, interesting. Now, when I put this first one in, there you go. See how it catches? It's the follower that it catches on. I mean, they're fairly smooth to load, but I've had a few jump right back out at me. If you don't, if you're not aware of that, like, like right there, see, it's not held in there. And that one, see, both of them came popping out of there. So you just have to be aware of that, I guess. And I'd never owned one or I would have known that. That's a, a very old distinct characteristic, I guess you'd say. Yeah, it makes you look a little uncoordinated when you're loading. It doesn't, I'm actually loading with the wrong hand. I actually load shotguns with my left hand generally. So it's a little more awkward for me anyway. But ah, there we go. No one in there. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of this garbage can because it just needs it, don't you think? I probably should top it off. Let's do that too. Safety on. Let's put another one in. I'm a little more coordinated with my left hand and fingers like that. I don't know why, even though I'm right-handed. Okay. Let's just see if we can uh, disturb him a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love it, that poor guy. You know, I was not slam firing that time. I, I don't know, maybe because I've shot more, but I can almost do better if I'm just using, pulling the trigger, because in that instant, I, you know, think about it. Uh, it's like having a bad trigger. This becomes your trigger when you're slam firing. So you need to be ready for whatever you're doing. So you pull it back out. And if you have a tendency to do that, you know, uh, that's your trigger. That's triggering the round. So. You want to practice that a little bit. I'd uh, rather use a trigger myself. Let's shoot some more of these. Okay, so uh, what did I neglect to tell you about it? Anything important? Uh, isn't that a neat corn cob uh, uh, slide there? I love that. Uh, foreign. It's a pretty cool old rifle. Reminds me a little bit of the, the Ithacos. See, there I go. I might just switch around here and load with my left hand since I've shown you how to do that. I'm more coordinated with my left fingers is what it comes down to. See? I'm not sure why that is. I guess I'm right-handed and left-fingered. Now there's what happens if you, you really want to count your rounds on this because you start shoving in that number whatever seven I guess it is. Then see what happens they want to come out on you. So then you end up with a coordination test here of sorts. There you go let the follower hold it in and you're okay though. All right now let's put one on the paper over here. Now you know what's going to happen, there's going to be one big hole somewhere. See, it's from the wad. <laughs> Smoke a little pot here while we're <laughs> Nice. Whoa. Is there anything more fun than shooting a shotgun? Not much. Not much. This is kind of what I do when I'm out trimming trees. I just grab a big pocket full, or I've got a little shoulder pack, and uh, just walk around trimming limbs that need to be trimmed. I mean, doesn't everybody do that? You might not want to try that in your neighborhood. Okay. That one didn't catch. All right. What else do we have? Oh, yeah, a couple more two liters. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> Oh, there's one over there. Come on now. What else? Oh, there's a pot. There's a watermelon, but I'm out of ammo. Let's go over here and load him again. Model 12. 
1912 to 1964, as I said earlier, and about two million of these made, all configurations in terms of barrel lengths, uh, chokes. This goes back to when you had to change out your barrel. I don't, uh, seem like somebody corrected me on that. I'm not sure when the screw and chokes came about, but I know that probably through almost all of the history of this up through 64, uh, you were you were just buying different barrels for the most part, okay, to replace. And then most of these were takedown, if not all of them I read. I don't know, I didn't know that. I was surprised to, to learn that. It's a takedown shotgun. I don't know if I need to take it down. You see me do that with the other one, but I might, since I got it hot, why'd I do that? Let's see, push that little button, spin this around, and I believe that does it. Then you push that out. Gotta make sure it's all the way out. There we go. And you got your briefcase shotgun. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Of course, the 97 does the same thing, but it just happens to be a takedown. I think more of these were takedowns. So that's a pretty interesting device. And then you just put it in there. So takedown's been around a long time. Yeah, like that. Oops, slide's got to be all the way out. Make sure it's out. I, I hesitate to put my hand over the barrel like it's going to fire, right? But Okay. There we go. Now, if I remember how to do this, pull him back down. You got to get him all the way down. And then spin him back around, line up the arrows. If he's not all the way down, it won't work. Okay, it's your favorite thing to do. Watch me struggle with something like this. Yeah, it's just about, yeah, there's the arrow, okay. Lined up, push that back through, and we're ready to go. Pretty cool, see, make it right out of the briefcase, and it's locked up tight. It's not, there's no jiggle there or anything at all, so pretty neat. Yeah, you notice this one, that, that looks like a, an old butt pad on it. And it, it is better for me. I'll put that on. Now you've seen that. Look, there's a piece of scotch tape on there. So probably just leave all that like it is and uh, not refinish it because the 42 goes back a ways, you know? If, uh, you know. if you know your math and your numbers and all that and your calendars, 1942, that takes us back to the early days of World War II. And... Uh, Again, I don't think this one was used there because uh, I don't probably not beat up enough because I think the barrel was cut down, you know, unless it was a riot version. And you, you, they used the, they call it the riot shotgun. It was used to, to guard like uh, air, army bases, air force runways, just different things like that. Not necessarily in the trenches. Okay. We all know how effective a shotgun can be. I'm pretty sure by now it's a, uh, it's devastating, it can be. So this thing saw, again, service in World War One and World War Two, big numbers. They, uh, let's see, in World War One, I, I think they bought like, uh, was it 20,000 of them I read? And for World War Two, they bought 80,000, the military did. So it saw extensive use in, uh, up in Korea and even early days of Vietnam. So. And it wasn't until the 60s uh, that you know, it really started seeing a lot of pressure from uh, other firearms, like the Remington 870 was a, a popular, popular shotgun. And, uh, but this thing was built like a tank. And uh, I don't know if a shotgun since then, or even during that time period, has ever been built uh, that, that solidly. So, what else? All right, let's put a couple more on that uh, can. <laughs> Short chucked it a little bit there. <laughs> oh, I gotta do that one more time if y'all have time. I'm up. I'm gonna load it up with a seven and uh, just crank them out. That's that's what a shotgun is for. And here I go loading with the wrong hand again for me. Okay, Get my left hand involved. I can do a better job. Three. I'm gonna count them this time so I don't. Try to stuff that seventh one in. Four, five, six. Okay, yeah. Didn't know I could count that far, did you? So 
safety's on. So now we're going to have seven. Oop. Another coordination attack. See what I was oh, showing you on that. You can't let one get away. <laughs> They'll all jump out of there. All right. What do we want to shoot? Oh, we have a watermelon. Oh, you know what else we have? There's a black box down there, and I'm not sure what it is, but I think I need to find out. Let's go down here and shoot that thing. <laughs> Can you figure out what that is? I think it's a case. Oh, be darn. It's a case of drinks. When do you know it? I think maybe I just won't shoot that. I, I told John I was going to leave that to last just to tease everybody. And I think I might just save it for the, the next video, whatever that might be. No, I don't think I will. I don't think I will. Let's put a couple more in. Let's put one in there, make sure the safety's on. And yeah, we're ready to go. Model 12, it's, it's really a pleasure to be able to oh, experience these old firearms. Go back into history a bit. And it's pretty cool to have a shotgun like this. It was made in 1942. That pretty much does anything a modern pump shotgun will do. And a little more with that slam fire, right? Can't hate that. It's a little more awkward to load. I, I mean, primarily, I guess it was a hunting. There we go again. Get that extra one in. It was primarily a hunting shotgun, but it, it, it was made so well, and it was, uh, in a way, maybe considered almost state of the art in a pump shotgun at the time. And so you can understand why World War I comes along. Hey, we need some good shotguns. and. And so it, it goes into duty and then, you know, on through uh, other wars as well. But it's a little awkward to, to load. All right. Let's put a couple more on. Well, let's get that pot first right there. There we go. <laughs> All right, Mr. Watermelon. Let's take you out of there. Whoa, <laughs> that's raining watermelon. <laughs> All right. Now, because of its age, I didn't want to shoot a lot of high brass, you know, or, you know with slugs and that sort of thing, double hot buck. So, you know, normally, uh, you know me, I've got a pile of slugs and everything else over here when I have a, a, a nice shotgun, but it probably would handle it okay. I, I just want to push it. Uh, 1942, these back of ways. Uh, it would probably do just fine, but uh, there's no need. I have lots of shotguns that will handle slugs. So, takedown model, uh, interesting from that uh, perspective. And also just the way it's made, uh, just such a big old solid you know, chunk of steel for that receiver. Uh, I, you know, a lot of modern designs are, are just as effective, maybe even more reliable in some ways. You look at all the polymer firearms that you just can't seem to kill. Uh, and even alloy frames, uh, receivers rather, on shotguns. Nobody complains a lot about that with the Benelli's, you know, uh, the Mossbergs, you know, the, the proofs in the pudding, you know, so to speak. The Mossberg uh, used by the military. Uh, you know, I don't believe there's reports of receivers breaking and cracking, you know, like crazy. You got steel locking up on steel. And, all that so so when i oh wax poetically about a big old heavy steel receiver it's not that i necessarily think every shotgun has to have that but it's just kind of cool to to shoot and, and own an old shotgun like this that, that goes back to those days harkens back to the days when a lot of steel and wood was used so i still have a deep appreciation for that and i know a lot of you all do some of you to the point where you don't even want to smell any polymer right or maybe even any alloy frames receivers so model 12 uh, i probably don't know anything else about it other than uh, uh you know that's kind of the time frame where it was so so popular uh as a hunting shotgun as a, a defensive gun one used in lots of different wars and by just the, the 
who knows how many folks have owned these things and traded them around and, and have enjoyed them. So good old Model 12. I'm uh, happy to be able to, to bring one to you finally and to own one to shoot the thing every now and then. That's, that's pretty cool. So we appreciate you guys coming by this evening and appreciate you supporting the people that support us, you know, the NRA, Bud's Gun Shop, SDI, Federal, Premium, helps me feed these babies. So we appreciate you guys and gals, most of all though. So come back and we'll probably do it again. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. Well, I've got you here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing, and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonora Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're gonna wanna think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere. Um, Cause some of these look pretty good.